Hi everyone, I'm Greg Schalk, Fire Chief for the North Vancouver City Fire Department. For this year's Fire Prevention Week, we want you to learn the sounds of fire safety. So let's get loud, North Vancouver City, by testing your smoke alarms and your carbon monoxide alarms. Test them today and test them every month. Show yourself and your family testing your alarms and post it to your social media channels. Challenge your family, challenge your friends to do the same. When you're doing it, use the hashtags, hashtag get loud and hashtag fire prevention week. So let's get out there, let's test those alarms. I can't wait to see your videos and as always, stay safe. Take care. Did you know that you can make a difference in the fire safety of your home? Yes, you. Get your spy skills ready. We're going to listen for the sounds of fire safety so you'll learn more about how to help keep you and your family safe. Listen. What's that sound? A smoke alarm will let you know if there is a fire in your home. A smoke alarm will make a loud beep, 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 beep sound if there is smoke. When you hear the beep, 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 beep sound, there are four important things to do. One, stop what you're doing. Two, choose the best way out of the room. Every room in your home should have two ways out. Three, get outside quickly. Four, go to your outside meeting place. It's important that everyone in your home has a plan to get out in an emergency. If you or someone in your home is deaf or hard of hearing, there are special alarms and devices to let you know there is a fire. Every home needs working smoke alarms. Install smoke alarms in every sleeping room, outside each separate sleeping area, and on every level of the home. Smoke alarms should be tested once a month by pressing the test button. Hear the beeps? That means it's working correctly. Listen, what's that sound? Sometimes a smoke alarm makes a chirp sound, like a chirping bird. That means the battery is not working or the smoke alarm is getting old. When you hear the chirp, let a grown up know so they can change the battery or get a new smoke alarm. A carbon monoxide alarm detects something called carbon monoxide or CO gas. You can't see or smell CO and it is very dangerous. If you hear a carbon monoxide alarm, get outside quickly and go to your outside meeting place. Listen closely. Can you hear one of the fire safety sounds we learned about today? Listen. That's a fire hose. Firefighters use it to put out fires. What about this sound? That's the sound of a fire truck headed to an emergency. Maybe this one? That's not a fire safety sound. That's Sparky. Listen closely. Great job. That's the fire safety sound. It's a smoke alarm. If you hear that sound, stop what you're doing, choose the best way out of the room, Get outside and stay outside. Go to your outside meeting place. Nice spy skills. Sparky would be proud of you. Now, go check out the fire safety sounds of your own home. And remember, you can make a difference. Hi, I'm Inspector Rebecca and I'm a fire prevention officer. And that means my job is not to put the fires out, but to stop them starting in the first place. And one of the ways I can do that is by teaching smart kids like you how to be home fire safety heroes. So why don't you come inside with me and we'll learn some more. So now you know the sounds of fire safety, don't forget when you get home to test your smoke alarm. and your carbon monoxide detector. Have you guys ever met Sparky the fire dog? We're going to read Sparky's story and he's going to tell us more about fire safety at home. So let's begin. 
Sparky the Fire Dog. Welcome to Fire Station number five, everyone. My name is Sparky. I'm the good looking fire dog sitting down in front. Dogs like me that have white fur with black spots are called Dalmatians. I'm an important member of the fire station team. I help wash and wax the fire truck and straighten the hoses. I love the fire station, but I didn't always live here. I used to live outside a schoolyard. Every day a nice girl fed me pieces of her peanut butter and jelly sandwich. One day I followed the girl home from school. Suddenly I smelled smoke. Her house was on fire. I ran all the way to the fire station to tell the firefighters. The firefighters put on their gear and went to work putting out the fire. The little girl and her family were saved. I was a hero. The firefighters took me back to the fire station and made me part of their team. When the fire alarm sounds, we all jump into the truck. I sit up front next to the captain. At night, I dream that I am a superhero. Sparky the fire dog. I must land quickly and inspect all of those houses. There's no time to lose. Safety first. Hi Sparky, said Ellie Elephant. What are you doing here? Do you want to play frisbee with us? Asks Iggy Iguana. I'm looking for fire dangers and I need some junior inspectors to help me. We are help, Roger, Ellie and Iggy shout. Roger knocks at Mrs Sheep's front door. Hello, I'm out back, a voice calls. It's Sparky and the junior inspectors. We're here to inspect your smoke alarms. Mrs Sheep lets us in and I change the battery in her smoke alarm. It's important to test the battery every month to make sure it's working. Mrs Sheep thanks us and gives us the mitten she's been knitting as a reward for our help. Next, Ellie brings the junior inspectors to her home. Ellie tells me that you have an escape plan in case of fire, I say to Mrs Elephant. Mrs Elephant nods and shows us the plan. We have a meeting place across the street in the park. We have family fire drills too, so that the children will know how to get out of the house in case there's a fire. Good job, I tell her, and remember when a smoke alarm sounds, Get outside and stay outside until the fire department says it's safe. I'll remember that, Sparky. After all, elephants never forget. The Tiger family lives at the next house. Hi, Mrs. Tiger. I'm Sparky the fire dog. I see you have twins. They must keep you busy. They sure do, especially when I'm cooking, Mrs. Tiger says. We can help with that. The junior inspectors measure out a safety zone around the stove. A three foot kids free zone around the stove and anything else that gets hot will keep your little tigers safe, I say. Our next stop is Roger's house. Hi Mrs Rhinoceros, I'm here to ask you a few questions about fire safety. Do you know who to call if there's an emergency? Well that's easy, the fire department. Do you know the number? I ask. I know, I know, exclaims Roger. It's 911. Good for you, Roger. You've got it right. Thanks for stopping by, Sparky, Mrs. Rhinoceros replies. Come back and see us any time. Clang, 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 clang. I wake up with a start. The fire alarm is ringing. I jump into the fire truck right next to the captain and the truck races to a fire. I love being a fire dog. The end. Thanks Sparky. I know you kids have got some great questions like how high does the ladder truck go? So let's find out. <laughs> Thank you.
All right, Perry, Perry Gillespie, let's uh, see how high this goes. All right. All right, so we've reached the top. So, Firefighter Gillespie, how high do you think we are right now? So, we are eight stories up. I'll give you guys a view. It's about 80 feet vertical in the air. The ladder is 100 feet tall, but with a bit of slope, we're down to eight stories. Hey. Have you guys ever wondered how we find out how a fire started? Let's find out. Hello kids. I hear you have a question about how we figure out how a fire started. You'll never figure this out. When a fire goes out, it leaves damage on things it's burned. We can use that to find out where the fire went, just like people leave footprints. I can see here that Dave walked along here and over to here. Oh, but then he stopped and disappeared. Fire investigators know exactly how to read the marks. Just like for Dave, maybe I should get an expert on reading footprints. Well, howdy there, kids. My name's Mel, and I'm an expert in reading footprints. Let's have a look. Well, this feller, he went down here and he stopped here and I can tell that he backed up and he looked, oh, there he is right there. So after a fire is out, fire investigators will go to the scene to look for the footprints that a fire leaves behind. Here's some examples. Once they figure out where those footprints are coming from and going to, they'll look for where the fire started and figure out how that fire started there. Have you ever wondered why firefighters wear all of these things like big jackets and helmets and face masks? Well, let's meet one of my friends and they're gonna tell us. So today we're gonna have firefighter Riley put all the gear on and then we're gonna turn everything on and show you how it all works. So off to it. So why is firefighter Riley putting this gear on so quickly? is because when the alarms go, we need to be out the door as soon as possible. So he is showing you exactly how it would look like if we had to put the gear on in a real quick manner. It's important that we put all the gear on properly. We practice a lot. Firefighter Riley is now putting on his air pack. He's making sure he has like a seat belt which are straps that keeps it on his back. He tightens those up. The thing on his head's called a balaclava. That protects his head. So now he's gonna put his air mask on. In the fire department, we call this airing up. So when we air up, we put on a mask quickly, tighten it to our face. Then we put the balaclava back over our head to protect our ears and our head. We make sure all areas of exposed skin are covered. We make sure we get our helmet back on because that protects us in case anything falls. And then we turn on the air pack. It's going to make some noise. The thing in his hand is called a regulator. He's going to put that on his face piece right now. And now he's breathing from his air tank. So firefighter Riley, I'm going to come over and say hi. So. If Firefighter Riley, if you're in a building and you're maybe looking for someone or wanting, trying to talk to them, what would it sound like? Hello, fire department, can you hear me? I can hear you pretty good, but it's kind of scary. That noise is a little bit scary. It might be dark. Yeah. Should I be afraid of you if I see you in a fire? Definitely not. Definitely Make not. Look for me. Okay. So now we know that firefighters are our friends and that we should never be afraid of them and definitely never hide. You've learned a lot about fire safety today, but let's finish with a song. 911, 911, 
The number to call is 911. The best way to practice fire safety is to be prepared Cause there's a possibility you might find yourself in an emergency You wanna be ready Things like Check your smoke detectors and replace your batteries Be ready if there's a fire to get out and stay out Draw up an escape plan with your family And agree on a meeting place outside your house Memorize the number to call in an emergency Nine one one. Nine one one. Nine one one. The number to call is nine one one. Nine one one. Nine one one. The number to call is nine one one. If your clothes are ever on fire, stop, drop, and roll. If your clothes are on fire and you're losing control. Just stay calm and remember three things. Stop, drop, and roll. Stop. Now drop. Now roll back and forth on the ground until all the flames go out. 911, 911. The number two call is 911. 911. The number, number two call is 911. Don't ever play with dangerous hot things that are meant for adults. Let's pretend that you walk into your kitchen, a very common location. But you better watch out because all around you are very hot temptations. If you see matches, don't touch. Candles and lighters, don't touch. If you see a hot stove, don't touch. Playing with these could hurt you so much. 911, 911. The number two call is 911. 911, 911. The number two call is 911. Firefighters are always there to help. Don't ever hide from a firefighter. An important little thing we must discuss. Firefighters are people you can trust. They might look scary with their mask and gear, but they're coming to save you. Is that clear? They're looking to help, never to scare. So if they're looking for you, show them you're there. Help, I'm over here. 911, 911. The number two call is 911. 911. So don't forget to film yourself and your family testing your smoke alarms and your carbon monoxide alarms and post videos to your social media channels with hashtag get loud. Thanks for watching.